Amen. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse number 1, I'm going to begin reading. You can follow along. The Bible says, Be ye followers of me, even as I also am of Christ. Now I praise you, brethren, that ye remember, in, that ye remember me in all things, and keep the ordinances as I delivered them to you. And let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, sure do love you. Thank you, Lord, again for the opportunity to be in the house of God. I ask, Father, Lord, that you'd bless now this hour of the message and teaching, Lord, of the Word of God to your people, Lord. You've given us your Word that, Lord, we can take and learn a truth from it tonight, Lord. And as I've studied as the pastor, and, Lord, you've given to me what you believe, what I believe that you want for your people, I pray that, Lord, it would be a blessing, it would be a help. Ask Holy Spirit of God, you'd bless now this time. Bless the supper to follow as well. May, Lord, we uh, understand the meaning of it by the time the, the, stu the Bible study is over with. We love you and we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. This is not going to be as much of a preaching time as much as it is a teaching time because I believe that it's very important to understand as a church the Lord's Supper. Very important that we as Christians, as believers, understand what the Lord's Supper is and why we take it and doing it and what it represents. And uh, it's a big thing. The Bible says it's very important. As you saw there, we, uh, we read, Paul talked to them about, he gave them ordinances. When you look up in the Bible about the Lord's Supper, it never says specifically that the Lord's Supper is an ordinance. You'll never find those words in the Bible, the Lord's Supper is an ordinance. But why we say it's an ordinance is because an ordinance is an established rite or a ceremony. An ordinance in this... Uh, in the sense here, what we're talking about, and to give you an illustration, God uses the illustration of the, the uh, Old Testament. We're going to go to Hebrews chapter 9 to help us understand a little bit more about it. Hebrews chapter 9. To help us understand a little bit, we'll see this. Hebrews chapter 9, verse number 1, the Bible says, Then verily the first covenant had also ordinances of divine service and a worldly sanctuary. The first covenant is the Old Testament. That's where God had made a covenant with the Jews, with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. That was the first covenant. The New Testament is the second covenant. It's when Jesus came and died, he did away with the first covenant. And now we have a New Testament. We have a new covenant with God. The first covenant, he says here, had also ordinances. The first covenant had things that we saw, as we, as we said, like the new covenant, it has ordinances of divine service. An ordinance is something that is given to an institution to perform a service in a certain way. For instance, the Ten Commandments, God gave Israel the, God gave Israel the Ten Commandments. The Ten Commandments, however, were not the same as the ordinances that God gave. The Ten Commandments dealt specifically with the individual. Now, the Ten Commandments are still good for us today. We, we remind ourselves of them, and God still uh, enforces the Ten Commandments, and that's how you know, amen, that you're a sinner, amen. You can go down the Ten Commandments, and eventually you'll find one. Oh, yep, yeah, I'm guilty. God says you're guilty of one, you're guilty of all, and all of those things there. But the Ten Commandments are not called the Ten Ordinances for a reason. They're the Ten Commandments. They deal specifically with an individual. The ordinances in the Old Testament dealt with the tabernacle and it dealt with the function of the tabernacle. God gave them ordinances, how they were to sacrifice, how they were to perform the sacrifices in the tabernacle. So the ordinances dealt with the performing uh, of the tabernacle and how to do it. In the New Testament, the church is only given two ordinances, or in other words, a established rite or a ceremony given to the church to perform that we do as a body. The Ten Commandments were done individually. The ordinances with the Jews were done as a whole. They were done gathered together. The Jews could not go and sacrifice their own animal at their own tabernacle at their own altar. The Jews had to take the animals and things like that and had to sacrifice at the tabernacle, gave it to the priest. The, the priest performed a certain function. He did this, he did this, and made sure it was done the right way because God is very specific. God wants his church and God wanted his tabernacle to be done a certain way. So God provides ordinances. The Ten Commandments, like I said, deal with an individual. When we break the Ten Commandments, that's our decision. And God says he leaves it up to you as an individual. And God says there's punishments for doing so, but that's your decision. When we as a church try to follow the ordinances, 
it goes on us as a church body and the responsibility as an officer, as a pastor of the church, is my responsibility to make sure that the ordinances are performed correctly. Otherwise, God's unhappy with his church. Now, if, now, I can't control what you do as far as obeying God's word and the commandments from God. That's your decision. You suffer with the Lord. That's between you and the Lord. But how the church performs an ordinance is my job as a pastor to perform to make sure that God is not unhappy with us as a church. That's what the job of pastor is. He's to try to organize. He's to watch over the church. When I say uh, maybe these things here or there, it's because as God's man, I want to make sure the church is run in a, in a fashionable way. Uh, and Not in fashionable, but in a, in a right way that would please the Lord. Because you saw 1 Corinthians chapter 11. We'll go back there. 1 Corinthians chapter 11. And let me find my verse here. Paul says, in verse uh, number 17, he says, Now in this that I declare unto you, I praise you not, that ye come not together, not for the better, but for the worse. For first of all, when ye come together in the church, I hear that there be divisions among you, and I partly believe it. For there must be also heresies among you, that they which are approved may be made manifest among you. When ye come together, therefore, into one place, this is not to eat the Lord's Supper. For in eating, every one taketh before other his own supper, and one is hungry, and another is drunken. What? Have ye not houses to eat and to drink in? Or despise ye the church of God and shame them that have not? What shall I say to you? Shall I praise you in this? I praise you not. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he brake it and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. After the same manner, he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. And we're going to keep going here in a moment. But Paul is dealing with a problem because as the man of God, God gave Paul the command to oversee the functions of the church. The problem that they had is when they came, this, the, this church, when they came to take the Lord's Supper as a church, they were coming to eat supper. They were coming to actually like eat dinner. And Paul said, verse 22, he says, Have ye not houses to eat and drink in? He says, This isn't time to come and stuff your faces. He said, This is a sacred time that is given to the church. He says, Hey, what are you thinking? He says, You don't come here to eat dinner. He said, What happened was people would be coming forward and they'd go to the Lord's Supper, get the bread and the, and the juice, and they would just stuff and eat and drink as much as they could and, and then eventually leave nothing for anybody else to take. And Paul said, You can't do that. And he said, that's not what the Lord's Supper is. He says, if you're hungry, go home. <laughs> amen. That's why we have a break in between church, amen, before the Lord's Supper, so you can eat, get full, amen. That way you're not hungry. <laughs> Otherwise, we'll start having dinner before church. Maybe we should do that. Have a dinner before the Lord's Supper? Hey, amen. <laughs> Baptist and food go hand in hand, amen. But God, but God said, or but Paul is telling them, this is how he wants, this is how the Lord wants it done. God is very particular with how he wants his church uh, to take care of its ordinances. God gave it to the church for a reason, and God is very specific to the church. God holds the church responsible for performing these ordinances correctly. So number one, in the Lord's Supper, you have the responsibility of the Lord's Supper. The responsibility of the Lord's Supper. The New Testament church is given the responsibility to follow the ordinances that God has given and to do them the way God wants them to be done. God is a perfect and a holy God. God does not like it when we as a church, when we take the ordinances that God gives us and we don't follow what God has set in His Word for to do. The first ordinance, is, and the first ordinance, and you know it, is baptism. Baptism is a command to the church. This is why we call it an ordinance because baptism is not, you can't go home and, and baptize your children in the bathtub. You know, yourself, here you go, in the name of Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, just baptize all your kids, amen. Uh, you know, that'd be neat, you know, just baptize them all, dunk them, and be done. But it's not that way because baptism is done by the church. Now, it can be done in a bathtub. 
I, I mean, I've seen that done as well, where a pastor goes, and uh, like in China right now, there's a pastor that I know of, and you can't have a church in China, so what they do when they have people that want to be baptized, they rent a hotel room, do it very quietly, discreet, and the people that got saved, they can get baptized, they go to the hotel room, baptize them in the bathroom, the church gathers there, and uh, they have to do it that way, because the church is persecuted. If they found out that there was a church in China, they would kill them. There's persecution. So it's not about where baptism is at as much as it is it's just by to be done by the church so that's why it's an ordinance now the commandments they're given for you at home you're to live them all day every day that's the God's commandments from his word those are for you to do uh, at, uh, uh, all day every day at your you do it at home you do them at church wherever you live you obey God's word but the ordinance is to be done by the church and so that's why we talk about baptism that's the first ordinance God gave to the local church to perform the second ordinance is this of the Lord's Supper. The church is commanded to do this ordinance uh, as a body of baptized believers. So in other words, you can't go home and have the Lord's Supper. Say, well, tonight my family and I are going to have the Lord's Supper by ourselves. You can't do that because the ordinance is not to your family. It's to the local church. So when we gather together and we are a called out assembly, then we have the Lord's Supper. God recognizes that and God is pleased because we're obeying His command. That's why when people say, and I laugh, they say, well, I have church at home. And I tell them, say, well, you can't do that. How'd you baptize yourself? <laughs> you, know? <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, how'd you take the Lord's Supper? You know, you can't do that. God gives specific commands to the church to perform as a, as a church. Have you ever been baptized and forgot to, and some, has anybody ever, got, when you got baptized, you forgot to hold your nose? Oh, man, that is a pain. I did that one time for one guy. I did not tell him to hold his nose. This is off subject, but I was thinking about this because I told Brother Johnny. I learned my lesson the first time. I baptized my first convert. I was so excited. I'm baptizing this guy, and I said, in the name of the Father, Son, Holy Ghost, and I dunk him. He comes back up, and he's like, ow! <laughs> that water went straight up his nose. <laughs> I felt so bad, amen. And uh, so I learned very quickly how to properly baptize. But I know that the Lord was pleased because we baptized, amen. But anyway, that's off subject. So the Lord's Supper, amen, it's another ordinance that God gives to us to perform as a church. When you come to church and then the Lord's Supper is performed is when God is pleased. If you try to take the Lord's Supper by yourself, God's not pleased with that. God says that's an ordinance for the church, not an ordinance to every Christian. And that's why we call them ordinances. They are commands, they are commands uh, for a service to be performed by the local church not as individual Christians by yourselves. So that's why we call them ordinances. Now, number two, the requirements. We go back to our text, 1 Corinthians 11, verse 28 through 30. There are requirements for the Lord's Supper, just like there are requirements for baptism. Amen. You can't be baptized if you're not born again. Amen. It just it doesn't work that way. That's not how God said He wants the ordinance to be done. The Lord's Supper is the same way. God has a specific order that He wants it to be done, and He has... Um, requirements to take if you're to partake of the Lord's Supper. Look in verse 28, the Bible says, But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. So God shows when we take God's ordinances uh, lightly, when we don't perform them the way God wants them, God says, look there, verse 30, He says, For this cause many are weak, sickly among you, and many sleep. That word sleep there is death. A Christian does not die, it doesn't experience death, a Christian experiences sleep because one day we'll be resurrected with the Lord. A lost person experiences death because they, uh, they are died and they spend eternity in, in hell, the second death. A Christian, the Bible says, is sleep. That's why when Lazarus, when uh, the, the, the Mary and Martha went to the Lord and they were talking about Lazarus and Jesus said, he sleepeth. In other words, he's saying he's not dead, he's alive with Jesus. He said, but he's asleep because one day we'll be resurrected. So here, these people took, as we saw in verse 29, they took the Lord's Supper unworthily. And because they took it unworthily, some were weak, some were sick, and some, the Bible says, were even dead because of it. Now, I'm not saying that this is going to happen to any one of you, but I'm not saying it won't. Because remember, God is very specific. 
When David was transporting the ark of God, if you remember reading that in the, in the Old Testament, he was transporting the ark of God and one of the men touched it. God killed him on the spot. Why? Because God said that's not how I said for it to be done. God is the same way with the ordinances in the New Testament church. When it's not done His way, now God is the judge. God decides how He punishes. But if we as a church take of it unworthily, then God will punish. You bark it down. That's why I'm careful as a pastor because I hold a heavy responsibility on my head to tell you to take it worthily. Otherwise, God's going to punish you if you don't. And then you look at me and say, hey, why didn't you tell me? And then it's my fault. So I'm not going to be blamed, amen. I will be blameless. I will, as an officer, inform what God says has to be done for his ordinance. Now, again, it's not mine. This is God's command. I likened it. I was going to use Brother Stan and Brother Dotson as illustrations tonight. They're in the Air Force. And uh, when they're given orders, what happens, Brother Stan, if you don't carry out your orders? <laughs> really bad. You know why? Because those orders aren't from him, they're from his employer. And you don't disobey. Brother Dotson, what would happen if somebody else tried to carry out your orders? It's a bad deal. So you see, I as an officer of the church, I have an order. That's what the word ordinance also is talking about, an order, a command. I have an order from God as the pastor to perform with the church the Lord's Supper and to do it the right way. If I don't, God holds me responsible. You also have an order from God to take the Lord's Supper. The Bible says that the church is to take it. Whenever the church takes it, you are ordered to take it with the church. You can't say, well, I don't feel like taking it today. God says you can't do that. When the church takes it together, you're supposed to take it if you're a part of the church. God says you can't pick and choose. Well, I, I, I'm a member, but I don't feel like taking it this time. God says you can't do that. And we'll see a little bit more why. But the Lord's Supper is specific. But also, again, people from maybe that are lost or people from another church down the road can't come and say, well, I'm going to take the Lord's Supper with you tonight. God says you can't do that because it's specific for the church. They're trying to carry out somebody else's orders, like, Brother Do like I asked Brother Dawson. You're given an order specifically, and we're given an order specifically as a church. And each church is given this order. We saw Paul told the Corinthians, but each individual church performs the Lord's Supper. We don't gather one day a year, all the churches in America, and Baptist churches gather have a big convention, and we'll have the Lord's Supper. Each church has it individually. Each local church is given the same commandment to baptize individually and have the Lord's Supper individually. If it's not done that way, God's not pleased. Now, a couple requirements we see, uh, and we're going to go over to Matthew chapter 26. This is when Jesus first performs the Lord's Supper, and he shows us how he wants it done. Matthew chapter 26, we're going to look here, verse 26. The Bible says, my mouth is dry, I need water. Excuse me. It says, and as they were eating, Jesus took bread and blessed it and break it and gave it to the disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body. Now, Jesus gave it to who? The disciples. Well, who class? One more time. The disciples. That means you have to be born again. You have to be a born again believer, first of all, as a requirement to, be, uh, to take the Lord's Supper. If you're not born again tonight, I would advise you not to take the Lord's Supper. It's a command of God. If you don't know, if you've never accepted Jesus as your Savior, I would advise you not to. Because God, Jesus gave us his example and he gave it to the disciples. We do not just allow anybody to come in and have the Lord's Supper. That's why I don't do it Sunday morning at church, uh, at the Sunday morning church hour, because there's lots of visitors. Normally there's people that are not members. There's people that are, you know, uh, just visiting. And I don't want to put them in that position. Because God says it's only to those that are, number one, born again. Number two, the disciples individually all had to be baptized or they were a member of the local New Testament church. Look there, uh, we keep reading, it says, He took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of it, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many for the remissions of sin. But I say unto you, I will not drink henceforth of this fruit of the vine until the day when I drink it 
new with you in my Father's kingdom. And when they had sung in him, they went out into the Mount of Olives. You have to be a member of the local New Testament church of where the Lord's Supper is being taken. In other words, like when I go to Colorado Springs and I visit my, my, uh, my uncle, he has a church there. I do not take the Lord's Supper where he, when he has it with his church because I'm not a member there. I'm a member here. Uh, I take it with us. Now I observe it, and uh, I'll, you know, I'll, but I'll let it pass. I don't take it because that's not my church. This is my church. Amen. We are a local body. That's what God uh, that's what God wants. Notice when Jesus gave it to the disciples, only to those that were a part of the church. Amen. Not just anybody was allowed to come in. Jesus uh, met in that upper room. This is why, look in verse 25, Then Judas, which betrayed him, answered and said, Master, is it I? He said unto him, Thou hast said. Judas left before the Lord's Supper was taken. You know why? Judas was not born again. And to be a part of the local church, you have to be born again. Now, Judas was baptized, I believe, by John the Baptist, but he was not born again. You can't be a part of the local church and not be born again. And I believe that's why Judas left. He knew if he drank that cup that God would judge. Amen. Amen. It's God's word. Judas left because he would have drank unworthily. So for us today, if you are a member of at another church, I would advise you not to take it with us because there, your membership is somewhere else. Take it with that church. Make sense? Because it's, an, it's a command to the individual church. God commands it. So, you know, if you go somewhere as a member of this church, let's say you leave, you go on a Wednesday night, you're on vacation, go to church somewhere Wednesday night, then I would suggest don't take the Lord's Supper at that church if they have it. You're a member here. Amen. God gives that command to the local church. And we know to be a member of the local New Testament church, and we all know and have preached it before, how you must be saved and you must be baptized. Like Brother Johnny and Miss Cindy this morning, they got baptized. They joined the church through baptism. What a blessing. Amen. They became members automatically through baptism. Maybe you've been baptized once before in a local New Testament church, but maybe you've not joined the church here. Well, that's different. You're not a member yet here. God wants you to become a member. God wants it to be done. Remember, it's an ordinance. If it's not done God's way, I'm not the judge. I'm not going to judge. That's why, and, and I'll talk a little bit later, that's why I don't tell you uh, and I don't walk around and say, you can't take it, you can't, you can't. I don't do that. That's not my business. That's the Lord. The Lord is the judge. I'm not the judge. I just am God's officer to preach God's word. If you take it, it's your decision. But know when you take it, if you knowingly do it unworthily, when we read it in God's word, God will punish, as we'll see. Uh, let's keep going. Uh, let me get back here. So that's the, and then the third prerequisite to taking the Lord's Supper, we're going to go over here back to 1 Corinthians chapter 11. 1 Corinthians chapter 11. Now, when I was, I forgot, before we go into the third point, when I was younger, I had not been saved yet. I did not know Christ as my Savior. Uh, my dad never let me take the Lord's Supper. If you have children and you don't know that if they're born again, do not let them take the Lord's Supper. That's not how God wants it done. If your children are not saved, then, that, then they need to understand that they have to be saved first. That's why it's great to do it God's way because see what happens is mom and dad, you know, if a child's not born again like Adeline, one day she's going to sit down here and I'm going to pass right over her the Lord's Supper and she's going to wonder and say, well, how come I can't do that? You know what the blessing I can do then is? Well, honey, are you saved? Well, what's saved? And then I'll get to give her the gospel. It'll begin in their mind to help them understand they're lost and they need to be saved. It's a blessing. But God says only to the saved. Amen. If your children are saved, but maybe not yet baptized, I would wait. Because again, becoming a member of the church is to be baptized or by letter. Okay, So if you, maybe your children have been baptized somewhere else and you became members here, that's different. But So be careful not to let yourself and then for your family, guard your family. Don't take it unworthily. Because look, this is why, and again, I'm not going to come down and say, yeah, you, you, no, because look, 1 Corinthians chapter 11, we're going to go back where it says here, Verse uh, 31 says, For if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. But when we are judged, 
Okay, so if you do take the Lord's Supper unworthily, if, if you decide, I don't care, I'll take the Lord's Supper, then look, it says, but when we are judged, we are chastened of who? The Lord. The Lord. Not by the pastor. It's not my job. It's God's. God does the judging, amen? God's the judge. God looks down and watches. When we as a church gather to hear, God is very much a part of it, amen? The Bible says we're two or three gathered together in my name. There am I in the midst. He's here every service. But when it comes to the Lord's Supper, the Holy Spirit takes a nice, good seat and watches. Because God is a holy God. A lot of times we think that we can just get by with anything with God. God says, not at my house. God is, God is very much about doing it the right way. That's why the Israelites had to take special Notice, the, 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 uh, the, the priest in the Old Testament, you read about it, when he performed the sacrifice wrong, God killed him. When he went into the tabernacle, they put the bells around his feet. If the children of Israel were listening outside the tabernacle and they didn't hear those bells jingling, they knew he was dead. <laughs> and they had a rope tied to him and they would pull him out. And they knew what happened. He didn't do it right. Now, again, I'm not saying God's going to kill us. I know it, it, as, a, as a teenager, I was so scared. I was like, God, don't kill me. <laughs> it's not talking about like that. But what I am saying is there are people in the New Testament, in the, in the New Testament church and in the churches today, I've known people to take the Lord's Supper unworthily, and God did kill them. But that, now, that's extreme. I mean, that, I mean, that's talk about a hard heart. But it happens. God does not mess around. God says, do not play around with church. Church is not a game. We don't come to church and play church and look good for our spirituality, take a spiritual check mark and say, well, look, I did church. Now, as a pastor, I have to help you understand the seriousness that God gives to his local church. God loves you, but God wants us to do it right. That's why God's so specific about our lives. God looks at our lives and He says, I love you, but I want you to be holy. Why? Because God's a holy God. He wants it done a certain way. Amen. That's why when you go, like we talked about Brother Stan, Brother Dots, and the Air Force, they have things done a certain way. You don't mess with that. If you do, you won't be the first, you won't be the last to have lots of problems. That's why they have court martial. That's why they have Air Force security guards. Because people try to take advantage and say, well, I'm above the rules. And they say, right. And then they tase you. Oh. <laughs> A lot of times Christians go to church and say, well, God, I'm above the rules. God, I, I'm above it. And God looks down and says, watch out. Now, God's long-suffering, but God wants it done a certain way. Amen. Let's keep going. Now, God knows your heart. I cannot sit and see because, again, the, or the third prerequisite, we missed that. The third prerequisite, when we saw in verse 31, it says, for if we would judge ourselves, the third prerequisite is to take, and then, or, and then go back 29, or uh, uh, verse 28, but to let a man examine himself. The third prerequisite to the Lord's Supper is that you take time to examine yourself and that there be no unconfessed sin between you and God. Is this saying you have to be perfect to take the Lord's Supper? No. What it's saying is, as a Christian, if there is something between you and God that, you're not, that you've not been willing to confess and say, God, I, I, I'm sorry. I know I'm a sinner. I know I fail in this. It's not saying you've got to come get it right and, and leave and never do it again. God knows you're a sinner. Praise the Lord God knows we're sinners. <laughs> Anybody else sinner in this room? Amen. We all fail, and we all have problems. But we have to, as a church, God says before you take the Lord's Supper, make sure that there's nothing you're holding between you and God that you've allowed yourself to be bitter over, that you've held either against somebody else or against the Lord Himself. God watches down, and if you take it in pride, and God knows you're not right with Him. Why 1 John 1, 9, if we confess our sins, He's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. But maybe you today are holding bitterness against a brother or sister in Christ. Don't take the Lord's Supper. God judges. God looks down. God is the one. It says, for when we are judged, we're chastened of the Lord. God looks down and says, hey, 
you're not right. A lot of times Christians come with sin, not that we're, uh, not that we're perfect, but we come with sin that we've harbored and we've not let go and we've not got right with God. And we've said, well, God, I don't care. I'm mad at him or I'm mad at her. God says, don't do it. Now, this is the funny thing. The command is that the church take the Lord's Supper. So when the church takes it, you have to take it. That means if you don't take it, it also is a command. If you say, well, God, I'm not going to get it right, and I won't take the Lord's Supper because I'm not going to get it right, then God says you've sinned. Make sense? So for a lost person, if they say, oh, well, I, I'm not, I'm not going to take the Lord's Supper, I, I'm lost. God does not judge them because they did that right. But if you as a Christian, you're commanded to take the Lord's Supper, and you come and say, well, God, I don't care. I have sin, and I'm not going to get it right. And so I'm not going to take the Lord's Supper. Then God says you've sinned, and God will judge you for that. You have to take the Lord's Supper, which means you have to get right with God. If, you're say, if you have something where you say, I, I don't care, I'm not willing to get right with God, then God help you. God help you. I'll be praying. Because that's a hard heart. The Bible says that's stiff-necked. You ever seen a stiff neck when somebody gets mad? They don't, they're stiff in their neck. God says a lot of Christians do that to him. Don't do that. Amen. God knows your heart. The next thing is we're not to judge each other. So that means you don't look around the room and say, well, they shouldn't take the Lord's Supper. <laughs> well, then, my friend, you need to get right with God. <laughs> well, how dare they take the Lord's Supper? I know them, and they hurt me when they did not return my, uh, what happened? What did people not return? Uh, oh, I borrowed my mom, my, my mom and dad's flash drive, and I still haven't given it to them back. I borrowed it two weeks ago. So <laughs> they did not return my flash drive I gave to them. How dare they? They've not gotten right with me. They shouldn't take the Lord's Supper. God says, that's a bunch of baloney. You're to judge yourself. A man's to examine himself. That's why as a pastor, I just teach the Bible, and then the Lord's Supper is given, and I just take it with everybody else, and I have to examine myself. I don't have time to worry about you and your problems. I got plenty of my own. <laughs> Amen? I got to worry about my family. Amen? So don't turn around, well, he shouldn't, or well, they should look around who's taking the Lord's Supper. God says it's not how a church is done. You judge yourself. God is the judge. As a, uh, uh, when I went and visited Miss Magdalena, as we talked about, stay in your own backyard. <laughs> Amen? Good statement. Amen? Stay in your own backyard. Amen? It's not none of your business. Amen? That was two double negatives. Terrible, Pastor. Not none of, it's none of your business. There we go. Now, number three, the result. So we had the requirements. We saw the requirements of the Lord's Supper. Then we, saw, then we see the result. The result was many were weak, sickly, and many sleep. So three punishments that God can give, and God uh, is the judge of what he does. Some become weak, some become sick, and some, become, and some die. Now, weak and sick are two different things. As we, as we see, it's separated. Weak uh, can mean talking about your strength, can talk about weak spiritually. Can, um, there's many things that God can make you weak in. I don't know what God's going to decide. God's your judge. Amen, I'm not. You, and there's many things you can be sick with. Only you and God know. See, this is the blessing. God deals with you individually. So that's why if after the Lord's Supper, if somebody comes to church and they have the flu, don't be like, oh, they took it unworthily. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's between them and the Lord, okay? So, you know, if, if, uh, if I don't show up next Sunday, you know, because I'm sick, you, oh, pastor, didn't, uh, uh, you know, no, no, no. That's why we said don't judge each other. Don't look around, oh, 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 oh who's sick? You know, <laughs> hopefully nobody died. Oh, you know, your pastor have my funeral. Well, well, <laughs> should have listened to his sermon. <laughs> Maybe I should listen to these on YouTube. <laughs> okay. Uh, but those things can happen. But don't look for those things and think, oh, a bunch of nonsense. Judge yourself. When God judges you, you'll know. You say, how do I know if I took it unworthily? You'll know. Amen. As a teenager, I remember when I finally was able to take the Lord's Supper. So excited, you know, and I was like, wait a minute. Hopefully I don't take this unworthily. I mean, I was praying. I was like, Lord, I, I, I'm not trying to be unworthy. 
I'm not trying to be, pro I mean, I was praying, bro. And I took that and I was like waiting for myself to get sick, you know, or something. And I was going to, I was like, Lord, I'm so sorry. Because I was, I, I was nervous. I was scared to death because I know it's, it's important. But again, remember God's long suffering. Amen. But don't underestimate God either. Amen. Don't be so hard that you say, oh, well, I don't care what God says. But don't be so that we just make it light. Amen. The church is, the Lord's Supper is not to be made of a light deal. That's why uh, when uh, I was helping prepare and when Brother Dotson and Brother Stan prepared, uh, we don't eat the bread while we're doing it or drink it. We don't. And then after the service, we take it back. So no, somebody's not going to come over here and down the rest of these. And eat. We're not going to do that because this is a special deal. Okay. Because Paul said, if you're hungry, go home. Amen. So I don't allow even myself. Uh, I, and now I'll confess, Dad at one time did let me do that. <laughs> I remember at one time, I would take it back, and I would drink the rest of the cups. And then one day, Dad came to me and said, Son, I believe I'm doing you a, a, a disservice. Don't do that. And as my pastor, he taught me a lesson. He said, Thankfully, the Lord's long-suffering. <laughs> he said, But stop doing that. And I was like, Oh, yes, sir. Amen. Because God says it's, it's, it's supposed to be reverence. What we do for the Lord should have reverence, should have respect. That's why I was talking about with God's house. We are to reverence and show respect to God's house for us, for our children. Why? Because it gives reverence to God, shows glory to the Lord, shows a respect or a fear for God. Amen. Now, again, is that, is that my commandment? No, it's God's. Amen. We want to make sure. I, I, so, I'm so, I so desire to make sure that we have a church that does it God's way. I believe you do too. I believe everybody here wants to have a church that does it God's way. Aren't we tired of churches that just ignore the Bible? How many of you are tired of going to a church and watch a church just ignore God's Word? How many times have I seen it? It's terrible. Churches all over just ignore the Word of God. I want to be a church that does not ignore God's Word, but says, Lord, yes. If that's what you say, we'll do it. Amen. We'll study your Word. We'll find out to do it the Lord's way. Now... There are three kinds of open uh, or three kinds of communion you'll hear in your lifetime is if you go to churches, they have what's called open communion, where that's where a church just announces it, lets everybody come, and everybody just takes it. Anybody and everybody, they say, Hey, we're having supper down at the church, everybody come on, and everybody just takes it. You just walk in and can take the Lord's Supper. We don't do that. Then they have closed communion, where what the church where some churches what they do is they dismiss. They say, everybody, if you're not a member, please be dismissed, blah, 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 and they do all this stuff and, and throw everybody out, and that's not what we do either. We practice what's called close communion, where that is, the Lord's Supper is given, everybody is allowed to stay, see it, observe it, and you're to examine yourself. I can't get up and say, well, dear Christian, you're unworthy. You shouldn't take the Lord's Supper. Please leave. That's closed communion. We don't do that. Okay? I don't, I'm not your judge. Amen. Praise God. I, and you're not my judge. Praise the Lord. Amen. We don't say, well, they're unworthy. They got to leave. They can't take. No, that's not how we do it. We practice what's called close. That's where you examine yourself and you say, Lord, am I, am I not? No. All right. See what I'm saying? That's what close communion is. So like if somebody one day comes in from a church from Pennsylvania and they're not a part of this church, but they're here on a Sunday night when we observe the Lord's Supper, we're not going to say, oh, I'm sorry, you have to leave. No, they can stay for the service, be a part but they determine in themselves, well, I'm not a part of this church. I can. Now, if they take it, that's their, that's their business. God's their judge, not me. Amen. Praise the Lord. God's the judge. Amen. And so that's why we do it that way. And so that's, what we, uh, that's how we practice that. Amen. Now, at this time, uh, that's the end of the, the lesson there. Amen. That, like I said, it's more of a Bible study, uh, more than it was a, a, a sermon. So at this time, we'll take the Lord's Supper. Uh, Brother.